How are you there guys and welcome back to Edgar TV, a video that I've been asked to do quite a lot down on at the Edgar 501, the X, formerly known as Twitter page. Reaction video to the Premier League lineup. We now know the eight players that are going to be taking part in the Premier League. And I'm going to discuss my reaction and my thoughts and my views on the lineup, but also those players that missed out. Now, the ones that are coming up all the time, let's go through and see what they are and then talk about possibly the two more controversial players in the lineup, certainly according to the feedback I've been reading out on the socials. First player we're going to discuss is Damon Hetter, somebody who, whose name has been bantered around a lot as a potential for the Premier League. Now, I think this one can be debunked quite quickly. The best we've seen from Damon Hetter in any TV appearance in his career has been a quarter-final. He has never reached beyond that, never reached a semi-final. And I think for that reason, we can quite quickly dismiss Damon Hetter as at the moment being a rival for the Premier League. But I do think he's going to get a campaign in there one day, just not 24. 24, we need to see him get beyond and at least be breaking semi-finals. Ross Smith, another name I've seen around, the European champion from a couple of years back now. The thing with Ross Smith, if you look at his sort of year, he goes out in the first or the second game of his tournaments at the TV events. Now, you'll see some of these are he's a little bit deeper into the tournament, but that's due to the seeding of where he comes in. He traditionally loses first or second round, and that has been the case throughout his entire career on the PDC, other than that European Championship win, which was a sort of a surprise out of the blue type win. So I don't think he's yet in this discussion. I think he needs to win something else, as does Joe Cullen. Remember, Joe Cullen got into this event on the back of winning the Masters. I think he needs to win another title in order to get him in there. We now consider him, or I certainly consider him, in my predictions, every time a big major comes around, I think this guy could pick this one up he's always in the conversation but I think he does need to pick up another title in order to get into this Johnny Clayton a name that was banded around I think he came very very close to getting into this event very legitimate claims in terms of the consistency he's had throughout the year I think he's probably the one of the more unlucky rivals in this but none more so for me than Chris Dobie who continues to improve and increase his level of performance. He's at the quarterfinals of the biggest events, which are the World Championship and the World Match Play. He also got a quarterfinal at the Grand Prix and the European Tour, uh, European Championships. Now, just pausing it there for a second. I think Chris Dobie was in. I think when Chris Dobie reached the quarterfinals, that game with Rob Cross, I felt was a bit of a playoff for the Premier League at the World Championships. Now, Chris Dobie... I think up until the final was played, was probably the eighth man. Now, the reason I say up to the final was played, I think when Luke Littler got to the final, I don't think he was in. The announcement traditionally was after the World Championship, but was delayed until 4pm the next day. I think a lot of that was down to seeing how Luke Littler handled that game in the final, because the PDC are probably going to come under a little bit of scrutiny for putting a 16-year-old in the Premier League and the possibilities and the issues that this may cause and long-term and people saying burnout and all the media and everything that comes with it. I think the BDC did the right thing here and wait until after the World Championship final because now they've got a counterclaim. How can anyone say Luke Littler can't deal with the demands of the Premier League, which, as we know, the viewing figures are around about six figures. Last year sometimes was in five figures. Now, how can they say that Luke Littler's not going to be able to deal with the demands of the Premier League if he can deal with the demands of a World Championship final, the biggest game of darts on the yearly calendar. It was even bigger than normal, breaking record viewing figures by quite sizable distances. The most watched darts event on Sky history ever. Luke Littler didn't just deal with it, he excelled in it. He averaged over 100, he played fantastic darts, he gave Luke Humphreys a real scare. He was a dart away from going 5-2 up in that game. And I think that is the moment where they looked at it and said, actually, Luke Littler can do this. We need to put him in the Premier League. Not only that, we look at the media attention that this is bringing in terms of Luke Littler. This is sort of what happened a few years ago when Fallon Sherrick got her wins at the World Championship, but for different reasons here. Luke Littler has engaged so much attention onto the sport. I have literally not stopped in terms of TV or radio appearances and everything, not just in darts, but in regards to media and mainstream media, the levels in which they're showing and the interest in this because of Luke Littler. So 
I get him being in on that side. Now, the bit I would be concerned about, the bit I was concerned about a couple of weeks ago, if you watched this channel then, you'd know, was just that duty of care. Now, I would like to see potentially a welfare officer or a chaperone or somebody around Luke Littler during this period of time. But we've also got to remember that there's choices. When I talk about Luke Littler going to Pro Tours, European Tours, European Tour Qualifiers, Premier League, Media Days, all this stuff, he doesn't have to do it all. He's got a two-year card. He's got no danger of losing it. Well, he's got a one-year card, let's be pedantic. He's got a one-year card, but he's not got any danger of losing that tour card for two years. And everything he gains now is free ranking money because he doesn't have to defend anything. So it could be quite reasonable to think, right, Luke Littler doesn't play every Pro Tour. He doesn't need to be traveling to all the pro tour maybe he's going to skip some of the european tours he doesn't have to play in every single event now i spent a lot of time around and with luke littler over the last year when he was down at the motor super series i can tell you that this guy just loves playing darts when he comes down here he comes down here for a six day gap and he'll be coming down on the sunday and he's sending texts into people is there anywhere i can practice luke you're back to play six days of darts he plays Monday, Tuesday, he gets to Wednesday, and he's going to local opens to play in local opens as well. He would literally play darts 24-7. So that side, the board side, is not the concern. It's just when you include all the travelling. Now, again, we can look at what he's done here. When he won that Youth World Championship, he then jumped on a plane and went straight over to Gibraltar and won that as well. So it's not something completely new to him, but I do think it just needs to be managed a little bit and just... Got to remember, you know, he's uh, he's only sixteen. You know, I'm going to say I was, I was playing with toys still when I was sixteen, but I still do that now. I've got a great collection of retro toys. But so for me, Luke Littler in is absolutely the right decision. The other player is Peter Wright that is causing debate now. Who are you going to put in instead of Peter Wright? That's the thing. I see people go, oh, it's only because Peter Wright puts bums on seats. No, it's a, there's a couple of things. Number one is a recognisable face, and when your casual fan is sat looking through. And they're like, oh, there's Peter Wright. I recognise him. So he's in for that. He's in because he's a name. If Luke Littler beats Peter Wright on the opening week, it's a story. Luke Littler's beat um, Peter Wright, ex-world champion, all the achievements that he's got. It's a story. Luke Littler beats, I don't want this to sound derogatory, but Luke Littler beats Damon Hetter. It doesn't have the same story or the same ring. So there's that side to it. There's the other side as well, and I've challenged people on this, and I've not found anyone who's been able to give me this answer correctly. Name me eight players more suitable to the Premier League than Peter Wright. If you can do that, please do it down in the comment section as this video is going on. Now, the reason I say that is because Peter Wright has not had a great season by Peter Wright's standards. We're judging Peter Wright on his level, not against the field. Judge Peter Wright against the field. He won the European Championship. It's a TV title. TV major. He won a European Tour event. He got to a European Tour final. He's won a World Series event. He's been winning titles. He's been doing okay. He's been doing okay. But he's just not been up to Peter Wright normal levels. Yes, he's gone down the rankings. Of course he was going to. He was defending the World Championship money. No one's going to lose that type of money off their ranking and not drop down the rankings. So that is sort of a... A bit of a debunk myth and maybe an issue with the system rather than an issue with Peter Wright. So, who more suitable? The players that we've <clears throat> mentioned already in this video, they've not got a title between them. So, when we look at Peter Wright winning that European Championship, surely he jumps above all of those. Now, the only way that this becomes a debate or an argument, as I've seen over on socials, is when you look at the reasoning for Luke Littler going in ahead of someone like Chris Doby, and you say, well, Luke Littler's not quite achieved over a year what Chris Doby has, but in that one event, Luke Littler probably achieved more than everyone has collectively. He's now the most followed dart player in the world. We're not just talking darts famous with Luke Littler. He's probably the most relevant sports person in the world right now. He's the favourite to become the sports personality of the year and you just could not leave him out. It's going to be good for the game. It's going to be good for the sport. We've got so many new eyes and everything on the sport now. I can't explain to you how busy it has been. I'm not even in the PDC system. 
I've been getting up at 9.30 in the morning and going to bed at 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. It has been an absolute whirlwind what has been going on on the back of Luke Littler. For that reason, he has to be in. For me, this is the bang on, the perfect eight lineup. I put a tweet out just about an hour beforehand saying this is what I think is going to happen. They've got it right. This is the best lineup that could have happened for 2024 for many, many reasons. Again, let me know what you think down in the comment section. I love having discussion and debate with you down there. So do pop a like on your way past. Subscribe to the TV. And I'll catch you very soon. Thank you, TV.